what's in it. Uh, we don't know. Let's, uh, we're going to ask some questions. Let's pick up with the audio feed, folks. Some Democrats believe you changed your positions based on political expediency. You were against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration right policies, now you say they're too harsh. You won't even make eye contact with her. Deal. Dozens of times <laughs> you even called it the gold standard. He's like, now I'm sorry, Ms. Clinton, week, I'm sorry. It. Will you say anything? Of course, it was Cokie Roberts well, actually, that says she knows everything about everything, over every the course issue. Of my entire life, I have so he just hit her with all the things she flip-flopped on right, right off the bat. I've been right consistent over my Let's get this out of the way. Absorb new information. I do wow. and just completely deny world. Everything uh, yeah. that the voters are concerned deal. with, he hit her all in one piece. State three years ago, <laughs> that I hope one question, so they can get that out of the way. And it was just fine. Well, clear the air here. Yeah. Last week, and in looking at it, it didn't meet my standards. My standards for. Can I get a little more audio here? For Americans for yeah. raising wages How can she for even Americans. say the word standard? And I want to make sure that <laughs> I look into standard. the eyes of any middle class mm -hmm. American and say, this will help raise your wages. And I concluded I could not. Secretary Clinton, though, with all due respect, the question is really about political expediency. Just uh, in July, New Hampshire, you told the crowd you, quote, take a backseat to no one when it comes to progressive values. Last month in Ohio, you said you plead guilty to, quote, being kind of moderate and well, center. Do you change a, uh, your political identity this is based an issue on who you're uh, of saying no, that they're going to No, I think to, that, uh, like most that this people is about that jobs, I know, quite I frankly, have a range about jobs, of views, but they are governance. rooted in my values and It's about corporate governance, and they're and afraid to say that even as and Democrats. I don't take a backseat to anyone when it comes to progressive uh, experience and progressive commitment. You know, when I left law school, my first job was with the Children's Defense Fund. And for all the years since, I have been focused on how we're going to unstack the deck and how we're going to make it possible for more people to have the experience I had, you know, to be able to come from a grandfather who was a factory worker, a father who was a small business person, and now asking the people of America to elect me president. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And I know how to find common ground. So, and yeah. I know how oh, to Oh, sorry, I'm going to speak in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> she doesn't want to use the S word, that I've had, socialist. Even but you have to understand, they love to play with never semantics. Had a good word to say about Progressive me, honestly, is socialism. But we found ways to work together on everything from reforming okay. foster care and adoption to the children's health insurance program, which Thank insures you. 8 million kids. So I have a long history of getting things done rooted in the same values Senator, I've always had. Senator Sanders, a Gallup poll says half the country would not put a socialist in the White House. You call yourself a democratic socialist. How can any you kind of socialist a win a general election in the United States? Well, we're going to win because first we're going to explain what democratic socialism is. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent, almost own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. That it is wrong today in a rigged economy that 57% of all new income is going to the top 1%. That when you look around the world, you see every other major country. And how did they do that? Healthcare to they do that by controlling government. Right Government is how States. they use what the you tool that they use to rob people. Country saying to that's the, that's that why this isn't going to work. Just like their campaign finance reform, they want to take away all individual contributions and make the government the sole financer of all campaigns. And the answer to everything for a socialist like is to give the government absolute and total control. That's what's wrong with socialism. He identifies a problem, the concentration of wealth. The concentration of wealth is coming from the corruption in government. For these people who are buying the candidates, who are buying Hillary Clinton, who are buying all these other candidates Denmark on the Republican country, side as well. Denmark is a country that has a population of 5.6 million people. The question is really about electability here, and that's what I'm trying to get at. You, the, the, he holds the Denmark up as an example. I can tell you when we were there in Copenhagen covering the, the Bilderberg uh, meeting, there were several people who came up to us and talked about how they had been impoverished by a government that took away everything that they earned and leveled everybody to the lowest level. And that's precisely what the founders called socialism. It didn't have the name socialism at the time, they called it leveling. There were people who advocated these exact policies and they called them levelers, taking everyone down to the lowest common denominator by stealing their property. An equality of results, not an equality of opportunity. That's what he's talking about and he's talking about using the very instrument of plunder uh, that the corporatists have used to get their 1% wealth, using that to try to uh, you don't give us justice. That isn't going to happen. 
Right. It's a very important distinction. People need to understand equality of opportunity, not the equality of outcome. So much and so many have so little by which Wall Street. Now, he says casino capitalist process. He doesn't say crony capitalism. You understand the difference the way he does this? Casino capitalism as opposed to crony capitalism. Of course, I guess Donald Trump could be part of both. Yeah. <laughs> casino and, and crony capitalism. <laughs> let, let, let me just follow up on that, Anderson, because when I think about capitalism, I think about all the small businesses that were started because we have right, so far it's just the uh, Bernie and Hillary for people to do that and to make a good living for themselves and their families. And I don't think we should confuse what we she's have talking about how she started a small business, America, which is save capitalism from itself. And I think what Senator Sanders is saying certainly makes sense. I don't understand uh, why she didn't stay in the investment field because she made so much money in just one single investment on cattle futures. She's one of the most successful investors America has ever had if she did that honestly. Right. What she did. <laughs> what she did. Because it was just a payola. Right. To turn our backs on what built the greatest middle class in the history Senator of the world. Senator Sanders. I mean, everybody. Is We're in trouble when Hillary Clinton is defending capitalism. <laughs> we have got to encourage that. Of course, we have to support small and medium sized businesses. But you can have all of the growth that you want. And it doesn't mean anything if all of the new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. So, what we need to do is support small and medium sized businesses, the backbone of our economy. But we have to make sure that every family in this country gets a fair shake. We're, we're going to have a lot more on these issues, but I do. Want well, that's nice, but he doesn't offer a blueprint on how he's going to do that. And we know exactly yeah. how that works. When they establish rules, it's like a spider's web. It catches the small bugs, but the bees, the big bugs go right through it. And that's the way these government regulations work out consistently. Yeah, what's that measurement, a fair shake? Yeah. Anderson, you're looking at a block of granite when it comes to the issues. Whether it seems like pretty soft granted, though. I mean, you've been a Republican, you've been an independent. Can you hear what I Democrat. said on the issues? I have not changed on the issues. I was a liberal Republican, then I was an independent, and now I'm a proud Democrat, but I have not changed on the issues. And I opened my record. Actually, when he introduced his candidacy, he talked right about uh, whether or not we should go back under the metric <laughs> system or not. So, yeah, I guess he hasn't changed his issues. <laughs> Using the tools talking about government metric. to help the less fortunate. The tools. Time and time again, I have never changed. Or English tools? You're looking at a block of granite when it comes to the issue. So why, I have why not change changed labels? The party left me. There's no doubt about that. There was no room for a liberal, moderate Republican in that party. I even had a primary for my re-election in 2006. I won it, but Go the money poured in to defeat me in Rhode Island as a Republican. Governor, That's what we were up against. Governor Malley, the concern of voters about you is that you tout your record as Baltimore's mayor. As we all know, we all saw that city exploded in riots and violence in April. The current top prosecutor in Baltimore, also a Democrat, blames your zero tolerance policies for sowing the seeds of unrest. Why should Americans trust you with the country when they see what's going on in the city that you ran for more than seven years? Yeah, actually, I I believe what she said was that there's a lot of policies that have led to this unrest. But Anderson, when I ran for mayor of Baltimore in which, 1999... She actually, just for the record, when she was asked which policies to name two, she said zero tolerance. I mean, there's a number of old policies that we were seeing the result of that distrust of communities where communities don't want to step you forward know, and say... You know, when they talk to him old, about this, it's, a direct it's interesting that these people be policies. selling gun control. Let's talk about this a little bit. At the same time, they're the concerned about out-of-control federalized police. Do they really want to give the out of control federalized police absolute monopoly over force? And, and to me, that is a cognitive dissonance that nobody has really explored inside the Democrat Party. All these people calling for gun control for civilians, take the guns away from everybody uh, in the public, but give unlimited amounts of weapons and shoot first curriculum to uh, the, the police to go out there and, and hammer people with. Yeah, because they're highly trained uh, police officers. They don't, they don't yeah. make mistakes. Yeah, they're highly trained to shoot first. Yeah. That's the, that's the way they're training them now. Yeah, well, that's a very they different get, training than they used to give the police. Six months of they training. They disarm you, and then they shoot you and kick your door down. Yeah. 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 Well, I said shoot you and then kick your door down. That's how it works. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Lawyers go to school for seven seven years to learn the law, and they still don't even know it all. Because of drug dealers on yeah. their corner. We've saved over a thousand lives in Baltimore in the last 15 years no. of people no, talk about together, the war on drugs the vast majority of them are they going to talk about poor all the people black. who got in prison it wasn't are they going to talk about day, the unconstitutionality and the violence and the corruption of the war on drugs 
We're not even going to see that from the Democrats, of course. Relations. Both Every parties are in on that, that scam. In, in one year alone, though, 100,000 arrests were made in your city, a city of 640,000 people. The ACLU, the NAACP sued you, sued the city, and the city actually well, settled. Six, all all these Democratic organizations happen? going after well, Democrat yeah. mayors and governors. Yeah. It's interesting. The word well, while he was mayor, they arrested one out of six people in the city. <laughs> But they declined every year after that as we restored peace in our poor neighborhoods so that people could actually walk and not have to worry about their, their kids or, or their, their loved ones uh, being victims of violence. we got Kit crime. Daniels over but in the Twitter room. Easy. We're going to go see what he's got to say. But together as a city, yeah, I got two a tweets lot of lives. that it was about uh, really interesting. It was about principle and uh, one is from Joshua Roberts, who says that Bernie Sanders is a demoralized, useful idiot who cannot differentiate between capitalism and a global NWO cartel. And I find that really interesting because <laughs> I rarely hear Sandal Sanders ever say anything about the Federal Reserve. And he's always attacking capitalism, but we really haven't had a capitalist system in the world since the Federal Reserve was put in place in 1913. And then we had the, uh, the uh, IMF and World Bank and so on and so forth. So it'd be, I want to kind of want to see how many times Sanders says anything about the Federal Reserve and fiat currency, if at all, tonight. And another tweet that we have is from a gentleman by the name of Michael. He says, do you see Hillary's eyes when she was reading rep the reply in front of her? Kind of like she already knew what the question she was going to be asked, and she already had a uh, response in place, you know, before the debate. We've already seen this with the White House, with the press conference. Where they handpick their own journalists to, uh, you know, bring in the questions that the White House already knows, already have an answer. So it's just this whole uh, points it back to this whole idea of this mini media manipulation, and how the uh, White House and the establishment kind of push this narrative that's very uh, controlled from the top down. You know, we just had an interesting uh, question here, Kit, while, while we were covering that. They just asked Jim Webb, uh, they criticized him for not supporting affirmative action. And he said, you know, when we leave behind poor white people in Appalachia because they're white, uh, we're not really uh, serving people. I thought that was an interesting uh, back and forth. I'll we'll have to go back and look at the tapes to see what happened with that. But you're talking about Bernie Sanders being afraid to tackle the Federal Reserve, talking about economic justice and everything. He talks about taking, right. uh, taking money out of politics. But you know what we need to do? We need to take the politics out of money, don't we, Kit? You know, that, that's really what the problem is. We've got the Federal Reserve and these other people. Here he's asking Here's, about guns. And yeah, let, here, let's get his response this. to guns. This is Bernie Sanders. This has a D minus voting record from the NRA. Let's idea. also understand that he's back in 1988, that. when I first ran for the United States Congress, way back then, I told the gun owners of the state of Vermont and I told the people of the state of Vermont, a state which has virtually no gun control, that I supported a <clears> ban <throat> on assault weapons. And over the years, I have strongly supported instant background checks, doing away with this terrible gun show. There are background model. checks. And I think we've got to yeah. move right. aggressively at the they federal keep level. Keep talking about legally. loophole. When a yeah. legal, law-abiding citizen goes and purchases a weapon, there are background checks. Criminals obviously don't go through background checks because what? They are criminals. They do backdoor today. deals, they get them out of a trunk of a car, and they go out and commit a crime. They keep talking about what criminals are doing and completely ignoring what you and I do. Legally well, these going background in. checks are absolutely irrelevant to these recent shootings that they're, that they're grandstanding. These people are mentally ill. Do you want to shield gun companies from lawsuits or not? This was a large and complicated bill. There were provisions in it that I think made sense. For example, so he's so asking her this so that Hillary that can respond. Yes, because this is what she. Thing, yeah. yeah, I mean they're setting it up for her. Somebody. And that somebody goes out and does something crazy. That that gun shop owner should be held responsible. I don't. On the other hand, where you have manufacturers and where you have gun shops knowingly giving guns to criminals. <laughs> or aiding and abetting that. That's not a that's not out. a case. Secretary he's Clinton creating a straw man argument. Yeah. And he said this no, Sunday, he said, well, when there's places where there's a, a, a lot of guns being sold, you have to do something about that. They have liability. Here we go. This, this has gone on too long, and it's time the entire country stood up against the NRA. <laughs> this is so transparent. Set him up and she knocks it down. Right. And even the majority of gun owners do. Senator Sanders did vote five times against the Brady Bill. Since it was passed, more than two million prohibited purchases have been prevented. He also did vote, Except for the Fast and Furious as he ones, said, right? for this yeah. community provision. 
I voted against it. I was in the Senate. Except for all the ones time. that they Why dropped the into the uh, moderate rebels there. <laughs> I was a carpetbagger at the same time this bill came out. Uh -huh. in America 